Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Great to be back. Today's video is going to be on hypothyroidism and low iron or iron-based anemia. Again, we're going to talk about thyroid conversion, we're going to talk about thyroid synthesis, as well as thyroid activation and your adrenal function and how it plays into anemia. Awesome. So let's dig in. My goal today is to make the videos a little bit shorter so I can do these a little bit more frequently. My goal is five minutes or less, so let's see if I can do it. So off the bat, iron, really important. Your animal-based heme iron sources are gonna be the best. There are gonna be plant-based heme iron sources, but those aren't gonna have a real big effect on increasing your ferritin and raising your iron saturation. So again, the big three things that are gonna cause iron issues off the bat are gonna be one, uh, vegetarian slash vegan diets. I see it all the time. That's number one. Number two is gonna be excessive menstruation. See, can you see there? Perfect. And then number three is gonna be malabsorption. And that could be gluten sensitivity, that could be multiple gut infections. So those are gonna be the big three causes. So when we look at why the iron's not getting into where it needs to go, these are gonna be the big three why. I've done other videos on this topic. If you just Google my on my channel and type in iron and anemia, you'll find these options. So again, iron's really important. These are the three mediums. We gotta do it with animal-based sources. In my line, we have a product called Iron Supreme that is a ferrous bisglycinate. A lot of the conventional iron, like the ferrous sulfate, it can be constipating, cause your stools to go black. Not the best, so we have an amino acid blend one that works good called Iron Supreme. We'll put it on screen for you. But again, low iron and T4 production. So there's a process known as iodination, and that's basically binding iodine, tyrosine, and thy thyroglobulin together and making your T4 molecule. Your T4 molecule, like so, let me just race this here so you can see it. T4 is tetraiodothyronine. So T4, really simple, it's gonna be your tyrosine and it's gonna be four molecules of iodine around it. and that's gonna be your T4, okay? That's gonna be your T4. So low iron, we need iron to actually make this process, the iodination process to bind these iodines to the tyrosine up there is gonna be iron dependent. So we need enough iron for that process. Low iron and T4 to T3 conversion is also really important because iron's also part of the 5-deiodinase enzyme as well. So we have selenium as part of that enzyme, but iron plays a role of coming in here and actually converting this molecule of T4 to T3. Okay, and how it does that so, um, so is that it comes in here like this and actually gonna play a role at knocking that off. Again, selenium also plays a role with that too. So low iron and T4 to T3 conversion, very important. Also low iron and adrenal function, there's some research showing there's a correlation with low iron, Fe, and equals low cortisol. Okay, so low iron equals low cortisol. Cortisol is an adrenal corticosteroid hormone produced by the adrenals. So we actually need cortisol to actually activate thyroid hormone. So if you go look at the T4 to T3 conversion, one of the big things that's needed in this conversion step is cortisol. So if we don't have enough cortisol, that's gonna affect how we convert and activate T4 to T3. It's also gonna affect T3 pooling. We need enough cortisol to get T3 into the cell. So we can have T3 pooling and an increase in reverse T3 if we do not have enough iron. So really important. What is low iron effect? Low iron affects T4 synthesis, iodination with tyrosine, thyroglobulin, and iodine. It affects T4 to T3 conversion with the iodination process. It also affects cortisol in that conversion process. And also, um, iron's really important for thyroid hormone recycling as well. So very important. And what are the big tests that we wanna do to look at iron levels to make sure we have enough? It's gonna be ferritin. That's a storage form of iron. You see that okay there? Yep, perfect. Iron saturation, iron sat. We're gonna look at iron serum. And 
we're going to look at TIBC, which is a binding protein, and we can also look at UIBC. And these are binding proteins that are going to look at iron. So these binding proteins typically go high when iron's low. Ferritin's going to go low when iron's low. So below 30, I consider it to be an issue. Iron saturation, below 25, I consider it to be an issue. And typically, iron serum is, isn't really that big of a deal. It's typically around 40 to 80 on average. You can have normal iron serum, though, and have these other things out of whack, though. So it's good to look at iron serum. Sometimes we'll see that high, and these can be low, and we'll see increase in inflammation. So it's good to look at iron serum, but it's not the be-all or end-all. Most people only focus on that. And again, these are your, your real good, your more complete advanced iron panel. Ferritin, iron sat, iron serum, TIBC, UIBC. Your typical medical doctor may look at RBC, hemoglobin, and hematocrit and see if they're all low. So RBC below 4.1, hemoglobin below 11.5, hematocrit, I think low 40s. That's off the top of my head. But that'll pretty, give you a pretty good idea of how to analyze your iron levels. And again, iron and anemia Iron-based anemias are deal busters. So if you don't get your iron levels looked at and assessed, you're not going to fix your hypothyroidism issue. Again, this is Dr. J here. I'm right around the five-minute mark. Click here and subscribe. Go below if you need help and you want to dig in and dig deeper at your thyroid or other health issues. Click below and schedule an intro consult. And again, subscribe for more videos coming your way. And also look for the live stream videos. We're starting that now too. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.